Welcome back. So today we're gonna to be going over engine oils and I thought what better way to do it today because it's absolutely freezing outside in the frigid state of Minnesota. So we have different engine oils, which is what we're gonna be focusing on. And I threw one little oddball in here. This is actually a 7590 gear oil. And the point of this video is to really go over what oil viscosity or oil weight actually is and what the flow rate will be from different temperatures being at zero, which is the current temp outside, all the way up to like, let's say an engine operating temperature, which on average we're seeing probably a 230 degrees Fahrenheit to probably about a 250 degrees Fahrenheit span of oil temperature at operating temp. So engine oil has a viscosity rating often referred to as oil weight. Now essentially this is just the thickness of the fluid or fluidity of the engine oil and how well it flows. A high viscosity oil is very thick and resists flow, whereas a low viscosity oil actually has a lot less resistance and very free flowing fluid. So essentially the numbering system is very higher numbers are higher thickness, very low numbers are lower thickness. And the viscosity numbering system was just a generic numbering system that the Society of Automotive Engineers came up with and is relatively simple to understand. These are all multi-viscosity or multi-weight engine oils. The oil that I have here is, is not to be brand loyal, brand anything. It's just random oils I had sitting here at the shop. So we'll be going over 020, 520, 530, 1040, and 2050, and then obviously 7590. So we'll be going over six fluids today. We're gonna heat them up, do some thermal testing, We'll be putting them in these cups. We'll be filling this up to the same measurement. These have little graduated measurements on the side. So we'll be able to fill that up. And I have a hillbilly contraption that we're gonna be pouring that into as we can see the flow rate with different little holes in there. And that'll kind of give us an indication of how the oil is designed, why the engineers are telling us, do we need to put 520 in? Do we need to put 1030 in? Do we need to put 020 in? And you can see why the tolerances are important in engines and why the fluid goes hand in hand with the engine design. So the first test we're gonna go over is the oil viscosity flow at let's just say startup temperature. It's about 55 degrees here in the shop. So that'll kind of give us the very first startup on just a casual day for your car. And so we can kind of see how the flow is with the oil as I pour that from each different weight and I'll, I'll time it too. So let's just get to it and move on to the very first test. So here I have my redneck hillbilly design instrument. We're going to be taking a cup and putting the cup underneath here like so. And then we're going to be pouring the engine oil by weight into the top and we will time the flow with a little timer. So as you can see here, I'm pouring the room temperature oil into this upper cup. Now the upper cup actually has an eighth inch hole that is drilled into it and this allows it to reduce the flow of engine oil as it's coming through. And for all the tests, I'm going to be starting with the lowest viscosity engine oil first, and then I will be moving up to the thickest oil, as you can see displayed here. And I sped this up five times and then 10 times the speed, so you didn't have to sit through the whole thing watching this thing pour the oil slowly. And lastly, I'll be stopping the timer at the first substantial drip of the end of the oil flow. And you can see from the results here that the 0W20 outperforms the 2050 by a long shot. So the second test is going to be a flow at about zero degrees Fahrenheit, which is the current temp if it is outside. So we can really see how that restricts flow by having a colder temperature. All right, so as you can see, I've sped this up times 15 and eventually I'll speed it up times 20 because this actually takes a very long time to get through. But you can see this is an important visual because how slow the oil moves through this eighth inch hole that I have drilled in that cup. And think about the small passages inside the engine at zero degrees or even colder, how long that oil takes to travel through the engine and how hard it is on most components that are rotating inside the engine. Now most manufacturers will change the engine viscosity rating in cold climate conditions. Not every manufacturer has one listed and some people will recommend going to a lower viscosity when the temperatures are colder. Uh, it's really important to just cite what the manufacturer specifies to use in that particular engine for the vehicle. 
And I'll just overlay the results now so we can speed this along and to the warm test. All right, and then last up is going to be our third test, which is our thermal test, which we're gonna bring this up to that 230 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm gonna try to keep the temperatures pretty consistent just so we can try to make this as accurate as possible. Like I said, this is gonna be a hillbilly kind of convention here. It's gonna be good, a little redneck science, which we're okay with. And so I'm gonna be able to take this, we're gonna pour it through the contraption, time it. You'll be able to see how fast the flow is from a warmer temperature oil and how you have a thicker weight or thicker viscosity oil, how it will actually slow it down. Let's get to the last test here and we will talk about the conclusion afterwards. So you can see for this test, I kept the temperature right around that 240 to 245, and that was for all the oils. And I got lucky here because the cups obviously are plastic and they really started to shrink down from the heat, uh, but it all stayed to good and didn't crack the cup or anything like that, which was good for me. Um, again, all these were two ounces of engine oil and through the warm oil, it, it really goes through quick. And it is important to note this this too, if the oil gets too hot, it actually can start to uh, break down internally. So it's important to have a strong oil at a high temperature. In conclusion, I know this was a pretty boring test to watch and it's very time consuming to do, uh, but it is kind of fascinating to see the numbers and how different it really changes with temperature. And it's probably all stuff that people already knew, uh, but for the people who didn't, oil viscosity really does change drastically in all types of conditions just by the weight or viscosity rating of the oil. For example, we'll use that 0W20 to see it go from at 55 degrees Fahrenheit to get through that whole container was 23.47 seconds. And then if you wanted to go to the cold temperature of the 0W20, it actually took one minute and 57 seconds to get that same amount through the container, through that little eighth inch hole. And then of course, if we go look at the numbers for the higher temp, which was the operating engine temperature, uh, that was right at 14.95 seconds to get that little amount through at 240 degrees Fahrenheit. So obviously with the warm temperatures, the numbers are very close together within probably one to two seconds from weight. But obviously if going from the 0 20 on up, it gets a little bit longer before it starts to dissipate. The staggering numbers was really the cold conditions. And basically the 0 20, 520, 530, those all, all moved within relative 30 to 40 seconds from each other. 10W40 and the 2050 is really where I noticed the big difference within a couple of minutes from each other. So actually the 20W50 was the, the staggering result because it actually took seven minutes and 42 seconds for that two ounces to drain through that whole unit. And again, for the just normal operating, our starting condition was at 55 degrees. Just the staggering amount of difference between that as well. Um, zero W20 was 23 seconds, like I said. And then the 20W50, actually one minute and 28 seconds. So again, you can see the thickness of the oil in the time. The numbers just change drastically. And obviously the numbers go higher with thicker oil. And it's actually important to know this just because when an engine manufacturer has to design the tolerances for crankshafts, pistons, there's so many small oil holes and galleries, and now there's variable valve time and all that stuff in modern cars. You know, an, an engineer has to think about all these things and what kind of oil they're gonna be using, and the oil film actually gives a gap, and so they need to know that so that when they make the engines, they can get that tight tolerance and make sure they're using the proper amount of oil. And when the engine is cold, it's fascinating to see that the moving parts aren't lubricated, so friction and heat builds up quicker. What can happen to it is it breaks down and actually fatigues. Oil is super crucial. It's probably one of the most overlooked simple things, but there's so much that comes down to the design and what oil should be used in vehicles. And it ultimately comes down to the engineering tolerances. So thanks again for watching. I know this is a, probably a really boring video for most people, uh, but it is some fascinating stuff. There's probably bazillion things I missed. And like I said, this was just a flow test. I didn't want to do any flashpoint or anything like that. It's just purely to kind of see how long it takes engine oil to move through the engine. And just through that little graduated cylinder that we had, it's pretty substantial. That's an eighth inch hole. Some holes are in these engines are smaller than that. So again, make sure to like and subscribe. I'll keep stuff coming like this, keep some funny stuff coming too. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.
Appreciate it. Thanks.